Hi, I'm Kerry Dalborn, co-editor with Caroline Smith of Permaculture Pioneers, Stories from the New Frontier. Permaculture Pioneers gives a history of the first 30 years of permaculture. It explores what we can learn about personal transformation towards sustainability through the personal stories of some of Australia's best known and also some more everyday permies, who each in their own ways have made an extraordinary contribution. So how are you using permaculture now? Well, of course, permaculture has been with me since Bill Mollison and I co-originated the concept in the early 70s when I was uh, in my late teens as a student. So it's been with me my whole life at various times. Um, early on, I imagined getting away from it, I suppose, around some of the concerns about uh, how permaculture was being promoted. I am not using permaculture in some sort of arm's length yes. way. It's like in here. <laughs> always a lot of hypocrisy and it's half the things you're doing are reasonably ethical and the other half probably not. Well, that's the nature of living in a world where you are trying to live according to a fundamental set of guiding principles which are actually at strong variance with the wisdom, the embedded wisdom and patterns of the culture. You know in terms of society what do you think are some of the important lessons? I think the issue of focusing on particular individual problems in society that we need to reform or address um, are, is, is part of a, an old progress notion that we're sort of gradually improving things. Whereas when we understand the big limits of sustainability that informed permaculture from the beginning, then we see we need to redesign everything from first principles. We started with agriculture because that is our working relationship with nature that provides our basic needs. Permaculture does lead us into questioning, in a sense, almost everything, <laughs> yeah. which is difficult because it's a, an unstable position to, to be in and it's a very um, uh, exhausting position to be in, but it's also amazingly empowering the idea that in these generations at this point in history we actually have the power and the possibility to actually not just redesign our own lives but through that process actually contribute to a huge cultural civilizational Shift. transformation. Individuals don't really matter that much. Yeah. But at these points of, of huge transition, then individuals do actually, uh, you know, arguably make a difference. difference. It's interesting that you've yeah. answered that question in quite, I guess what I see is a very big picture yeah. way. Well, of course, that big picture view is, is partly uh, my own personal obsession or sort of uh, view of things. And for me, those sorts of ideas always need to be balanced by bringing them back to earth. I ended up with a, a personal reputation in the early decades of permaculture for being a practical person who just went on quietly and did things in permaculture rather than talking about them. While Bill Mollison was of course taking permaculture to the world. Yeah. But for me, a lot of that was really the discipline of actually reconnection to practical things because I know I'm actually the sort of person that my head can drift off into the clouds. Day-to-day right. <laughs> -day working with nature is the, that constant sort of uh, lesson and the constant reminder of what the rules of nature are and how she works and how we're all constrained by it and reduces that tendency to hubris and, and thinking uh, in that big way because gardening is the, 
the activity on the planet that most directly connects us with nature at the same time of providing essential things that we need in inefficient ways. But it, it, it sort of constantly reminds us about mystery of things, um, about uh, complexity, about diversity, um, that we're not really in control, we're just um, a player in a larger uh, scheme of things. Um, and it forces us to deal with uh, what Mollison's famous, now famous thing about the problem is the solution in permaculture, which has now even been taken up by corporations That's like like uh, like Chevron. <laughs> but that idea of the problem is the solution, classically a weed, a pest that you are constantly fighting against, is is in some way a lesson that you need to learn um, in some way. And so often we find, well, a weed is actually uh, a healer of the soil or it's reversing some damage we've done. And it doesn't necessarily mean we just have to go, oh yeah, whatever grows is fine. But there's a, there's a learning for us in those things. And that is shifting that how we struggle against something um, with sort of vicious cycles often uh, of, of attempting to address a problem and then sort of um, having a success but actually end up making it worse in some larger context to a virtuous cycle where we do something and gain a benefit and that actually makes a larger benefit for a larger number of participants and that that goes on to make a, a, a greater benefit. So that sort of vicious cycle into a virtuous yes. cycle. Well, I think any concept that really provides a galvanizing framework of meaning and value in people's lives, um, which permaculture certainly has been, always has that danger of turning into uh, dogma or rigid view where rather than the essence of the ideas, the uh, some crystallised um, exact formula becomes what people hold on to. Could I ever see that happening to permaculture? Well, certainly in the 70s, Mollison and I, like many others, believed that the crisis facing civilization was actually happening very immediately and that this could catapult ideas like permaculture into this cultural vacuum of, of a collapsing society where people could adopt it and it represented power because you know I've always been very serious that permaculture ways of thinking represent real power in a world of reducing energy and resources um, and that world was deferred for at least 30 years <laughs> by all sorts of geopolitical changes and a lot of the ideas that came out of that first wave of modern environmentalism were sort of put aside or, or remained in the counterculture or remained at the fringe of society. As you said, I've always been the sceptic and, you know, like the kicker of sacred cows within permaculture and I'm always in some ways the mood continue to be uh, you know, a critic of the movement. But when I look around the world, it still seems to be the, um, the best framework out there for the transition we need. I think